Hello, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second session of our uh, wonderful GCP course. So can you please confirm whether you are able to hear me clearly and uh, let me share my screen and please confirm me whether you are able to hear to the my voice and also see the screen also. One second, let me share my screen. Yeah, let me know if you are able to see the screen clearly also. Okay, can someone put it in the chat? Thank you so much. Okay, let me see like what are in the charts first. Anyone, any have, uh, does anybody has a uh, you know, doubt from yesterday's session? Just put it in the chart. I'll be taking up that and uh, we'll start the session. So thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, Emmanuel. Uh, thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Aditi. Hey, Aditi. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, thank you, Shiva. Thank you, Prakash. Thank you, Mayur. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you everyone for uh, confirming that you are able to hear me clearly and see the screen. Okay, fantastic people. Now, anybody new today? Anybody didn't uh, attend the session today, first session yesterday? If they have missed yesterday's session, let me know. Uh, if, if everybody has attended yesterday's session, then we will proceed with the next agenda of today's session. That is to understand how, uh, you know, cloud has evolved and how does uh, learning cloud helps us in day-to-day -day responsibilities as a software engineer, okay? Basically, you can be a developer, you can be a DevOps engineer or an SRE or cloud engineer, whatever it is. How does cloud help you? Uh, how does cloud evolve and, you know, how does uh, GCP in particular can help you in move, uh, in, in your day-to-day -to -day, day -day activities? We will see at length about, like, what are different services that can help, okay? Thank you so much, Emmanuel, for helping out. So we will start with our uh, session today. Let me check whether recording is proper or not. Okay, recording is good. Okay, let's proceed. Myself, uh, I'm Vijay Sharma. I'm GCP certified Google Cloud Architect and I'm a Microsoft certified professional. And I have 12 plus years of experience in dealing with different types of infra, creating infra, designing, architecting infra and solutions for different clients and multiple cloud platforms. So I feel myself blessed to be here to teach you, to train you and to give you the basic understanding of how to use GCP and uh, and then help you grow in your career. Okay, this is a GCP course we are going, we have started from yesterday, it will be from 7 a.m. IST onwards, and this is the fee and everything. Let's proceed to the actual session. Okay, so today's agenda is going to be module one. That is what is cloud computing, how cloud deployment models are there and cloud service models before we go to all these things, okay? So let's try to understand what led to cloud computing and why Google Cloud, uh, uh, you know, uh, how Google Cloud can help us in our day-to-day -day responsibilities, okay? So let's let's uh, try to understand different ways of cloud computing and and then why cloud computing came into the picture. Let's 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 keep the slides apart for a minute and let's try to understand what are you know the things that evolved uh, that helped in evolution of cloud computing. Usually, like if you see, uh, I know I know everybody knows you know you know in eighties and seventies there used to be big big. Uh, 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 you know, uh, servers and uh, they are called mainframes. And even before that, there are 1950s, you have something called uh, transistor based, uh, uh, you know, computational uh, machines and then like Enigma and all, then it, it proceeded to, uh, uh, you know, uh, transistor invention, sorry, uh, earlier there were no transistor, there used to be uh, uh, tubes and uh, they used to calculate based on that and then transistor was invented and big, big mainframes came into the picture, they used to do punching and all, that is the time of when Bill Gates learned his, uh, uh, you know, uh, trick of the trade and they built operating systems and other things and then proceeded with, uh, you know, uh, more and more IC based technology, integrated circuits based technology and uh, um, more and more, you know, uh, compact machines came into picture and the computational uh, uh, capability increased. If you if you uh, uh, know Moore's law, Moore's law says that for every uh, uh, year and like that and uh, your size of the uh, chips uh, becomes half and the number of transistors that can fit in with the size increases. I mean, basically the capacity increases. So that's went and uh, now we are seeing billions 
millions of transistors trans, uh, transistors in a single single uh, uh, you know uh, one square centimeter chip so now uh, we are at a uh, fast paced uh, 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 age okay this is about hardware development then parallelly what used to have what happened is that there used to be wide uh, um, you know uh, coverage of network that means uh, the broadband coverage and internet revolution parallelly happened which led to communication and connectivity between different areas possible okay from from arpanet and then came internet uh, and and now we have the uh, broadband web 2.0 3.0 and we what not okay we have parallelly the internet revolution both together led to something called you know uh, uh, you know the way how we use the resources especially the servers now coming coming to coming to the industry's expectation what was the industry's expectation earlier and how the industry's expectation expectation evolved based on the technologies earlier after, uh, before like uh, a, 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 you know 20 25 years ago there used to be a monolithic system or, or uh, you know uh, a, a, a single piece of code for your whole application and used to deploy that into uh, you know big rack servers and uh, time to market used to take like sometimes six months to one year okay that was that was uh, something called as waterfall model where you have the software built and uh, the built software used to be tested and once it is tested if there are any issues they used to take it back to the developers again bug fixing and so much more so that that used to cost more when the bugs are detected once you go live then it is very very costly to fix those bugs and bring uh, uh, fix those bugs and uh, uh, correct them so that's why uh, people started talking about a new we need a new way of working things up we need a new software development life cycle model wherein you know does it should not take so much time anymore so for that purpose, they 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 came up with you know agile model and all. Now, uh, in 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 this agile model, they used to have uh, you know smaller set of code that is called they they came up with something called microservices as as things evolved. Okay, in two thousand uh, in two thousand uh, uh, first decade and two thousand ten onwards, there used to be microservices based architecture and people used to build separate uh, individual uh, micro front ends and uh, there is something called. Uh, REST API, so API based uh, uh, working they have developed and so there was a parallel software development revolution also happening. There was trends that were happening which, which made that to develop and ship the code to the market faster. Okay, that is what uh, parallelly uh, happening. Now, now in one hand you have the hardware and uh, uh, you know computation based and storage based uh, storage also became cheaper and cheaper and computational also computational capability became cheaper affordable and also huge uh, scalability happened and parallelly internet revolution happened and and, and on the other hand uh, you know time to market and uh, building the software bu providing new features in a much faster time the way uh, software development life cycle worked it also it has it also has changed and the expectations were that uh, you need to you need to you know build ship faster and go to the market faster that's what the client's expectations were from all these things there was one fundamental bottleneck that was there what is that fundamental bottleneck if you see let me try to increase the screen one fundamental bottleneck what people were facing is that the availability of the servers which host the system and the machines which will help in developing the software now what happened whenever a company used to uh, uh, you know want to build a uh, you know application and deploy an application what it, it needs to do it need to procure uh, first uh, some machines and some some uh, development purpose they need to procure certain uh, uh, servers and certain uh, systems for uh, uh, people developers and they need to have a centralized mechanism to store the source code and then what used to happen they need to have a rack servers uh, especially their own mini data centers for each company to host the application in tomcat or whatever server uh, web server they were using there were middleware there were many other components for that purpose they used to have uh, their own physical data centers where they need to they used to keep something called rack servers these rack servers are very costly uh, they are still in use of course uh, uh, in, in 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 many com 
companies. Uh, but uh, these servers are very costly and the procurement cycle of these servers is uh, used to take like months uh, time. So now whenever there is a demand for your application, uh, how do you procure new rack servers and you know set up the the whole process of you know raising invoice and procuring them it's all very cumbersome and also there there happened uh, a, a startup revolution where smaller companies want to go to market and give a tough competition or tough fight to the bigger uh, uh, organizations now for these smaller companies uh, uh, you know, the capital expenditure, that is called CapEx. CapEx is a huge problem. They cannot set up big, big drag servers with millions of dollars of expenditure. They they, they, they come up with shoestring budget. They don't have much, uh, uh, you know, infra resources at hand to, to spare. Then how do how do they, you know, uh, afford these servers? But, but, but they want to bring their market and they want to bring their new uh, services into the market faster and faster. So there came all, from all these revolutions, there came some a new business idea to Jeff uh, to to to, to uh, some some people like Jeff Bezos and uh, from Amazon of course uh, from from uh, some some uh, bigger companies and organizations like Google, Microsoft, and uh, Amazon. They thought of how what if what if uh, we we uh, you know buy huge servers uh, use the latest uh, uh, you know trends in all these things and then why don't we have we host um, use uh, uh, places we take rent like like warehouses and then put up our server there and then uh, whoever wants those servers uh, on demand basis we will rent them okay while renting them we will be using something called called virtualization or uh, 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 you know uh, to to be very precise we they can use a a, a special software called hypervisors uh, to 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 take the infra from uh, uh, the main servers share them across whoever want now what happened whatever the end user needs for example i am a software uh, 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 company uh, uh, owner who is a like like is a small startup and i just want my smaller application to be developed quicker and uh, uh, you know uh, my web application like something like uh, uh, photo processing software or something like a smaller version of insta or a smaller version of uh, 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 facebook or meta so so what should I do? Then what I can do, I can talk to this guy, the bigger uh, uh, AWS or Azure or my uh, uh, GCP. I'll talk to them. What I will say, hey, uh, I need few servers for my needs. Like each server can be around like 4 GB of RAM and 8 cores and uh, some storage for me. I'm on certain networking. I don't want to uh, have the burden of managing these servers. I, I don't have even the resources of managing these servers. I just have the developers and one guy who can manage all the infrastructure. So now I need servers. So then these guys, GCP said, uh, uh, like, you know, hey, okay, we have a service where uh, we have infrastructure as service. We provide you virtual machines and whatever the configuration you want, you tell me, we will provide you, uh, you know, the amount of CPU required, amount of memory, that is RAM, amount of storage required, and whatnot, we will provide the networking free of cost uh, as a bonus to you, okay? So, um, so what, what happened, uh, then this pay as you go model started, okay? So that's how cloud started and they started renting out the services. Then came uh, a question that, uh, there was a subsequent, uh, there was a, uh, uh, again, there was a challenge that this infrastructure has so, uh, uh, you know, uh, service uh, tools like VMs and all, they need to be configured. So then there was so much responsibility on the uh, client side or uh, the users that they need to configure, you know, patch the systems and many other things. What if, what if uh, even the cloud provider takes care of the patching and everything and you just give the platform to me? For example, I want a Ubuntu machine with a Tomcat server and everything installed. You take care of the patching. You take care of the server's uh, upgrades and everything. You just give me a machine where I can directly deploy the code into. That's how something called Platform as a Service came into picture. Platform as a Service provides you, provides the end user the ability to, you know, even much faster deployment of their code and without worrying about the underlying, uh, you know, configurations also. Now, 
that is also super and 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 going forward what what users expectation grew and they 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 want much much uh, uh, more sophisticated systems where they don't even want to you know uh, you know modify the code uh, and deploy the code they want the platform itself they will just ship the code and let everything happen something like you know gmail you don't need to do anything saas services they want they want software as a services like like uh, you know uh, pre built uh, uh, something like cosmos db uh, uh, you know uh, cloud sql which is which is everything you know the db is come uh, uh, you just need to input the data that's it you just need to input data and everything is available you don't need to bother about where my sql machines are running what version of sql are running uh, of course you can decide you can you can you can require you can ask for uh, the the specific versions but you don't need to worry about the licensing you don't need to worry about the patching of the underlying os you don't need to worry about the networking if the, if something goes wrong how to make sure that it is highly available if it, uh, my database should not go down so everything is abstracted and only the product is given that is called software as a service so there are many other uh, uh you know container as a service you know many other things but we won't go into that we will talk about them uh much much later uh, whenever the specific uh, tool is there so essentially this is uh what a cloud revolution took place from where to uh what are different different underlying technologies that helped in evolve evolution of the cloud okay i know this is pretty basics to you uh but uh hi sai uh yes that will be available in uh uh youtube and uh, portal also i think uh, just check with support team they will help you sai yeah the recording will be available but i think if only registered participants would get uh, after 3 days first 3 days will be free of uh, cost so in youtube and all you might get it okay so just check with the support team so so this is what uh, uh, cloud revolution is guys now let's go ahead and talk about theoretically certain ways of defining cloud because when you are a cloud engineer you are not a layman right this is about layman stuff this is about how you teach to a kid uh, teach to teach to someone who is new but we need someone uh, uh, who is proficient so tomorrow when you go to the client tomorrow you talk to people you 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 build your uh, uh, you know uh, what you call uh, uh, you talk to clients on a on a, on a uh, business lunch and all you don't talk in these terms right you talk professionally you word you use a uh, technical jargon so let's discuss that also okay so let's go ahead and discuss some things which are uh, you know something something which are uh, technically sound and technically correct words how to put in uh, cloud in a definition so basically National Institute of Standards and Technology, a US-based uh, uh, technological administration organization, which defines cloud computing as a model for enabling on-demand net, uh, you know, certain uh, features like on-demand network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources uh, like network servers, storage applications, and service, and that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. Okay, too much, too much uh, 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 jargon. But what they essentially say is that whenever you need, they will provide a shared pool of resources. They will have a pool of resources. Who are they? They means the organizations are cloud provider. Okay, the cloud provider provides you or the end user a shared pool of services, which which uh, uh, which uh, which are centralized in their servers, but they can share that uh, uh, resources into 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 certain uh, users. Uh, these resources can be networking servers storage applications and services and and also what is the primary advantage here whenever you want that can be rapidly provided to you and you don't need to uh, take care of any effort in their management it's the responsibility of the cloud provider to manage them so that's how minimal management effort or service provider interaction is required so you just like if you want to buy a movie ticket what do you do you go to a certain online portal like uh, book my show or some other portal in us i don't remember what that is but you can go to the box office you can buy a ticket and watch a movie right you don't need to bother about you know uh, you know what are the uh, projector technologies they are using you don't need to worry about the seat quality you don't need to worry about the popcorn of course okay so in in intermission you can buy uh, whatever you want to have consume and other things so everything is provided to you like that is a consumer based model so similarly cloud is also a model where a shared pool of resources are provided to you that is one sort of definition of course we have our good old wikipedia wikipedia also defines uh, cloud computing as internet based computing model where 
here the resources are shared and software and information are provided to uh, computers and other services on demand like electricity gate so so you have your electricity based uh, 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 machines in your in, in your home so once you take the connection you can use any machine you want uh, and uh, based you just pay for the amount of electricity you consume right same same model whatever resource you want from the cloud the shared resource you ask them you buy them and you pay for the amount of uh, period you use of course there will be certain thing called reserved uh, model and all we will come to that later but basically essentially cloud is built on on demand model of course cloud computing is a style of computing where dynamically scalable and often virtual virtualized services are provided as a service so what are this word virtualized means what is virtualization and what what, what uh, how does this uh, works basically virtualization is nothing but having some resources uh, shared to some users not physically but virtually what does that mean i have certain things like you know in traditional way what used to happen there is something called uh, you know physical uh, hardware what is physical hardware you have your uh, ram uh, you have your storage uh, you have your uh, CPUs. For example, if somebody has worked with uh, certain rack servers, you might know that uh, each rack servers will be something like uh, 128 uh, 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 or, or more than, you know, few, few hundreds of GBs of memory, that means RAM, and then petabytes, uh, terabytes of hard disk for storage, and usually like, uh, you know, uh, 64 uh, core or, you know, 48 core uh, processors will be there in the rack server. Now, when a user requires a simple dual core or you know four core with you know 8 gb machine and with some storage like uh, 16 gb or even 64 gb storage then how do you provision that out of the whole bigger pool of resources so for that purpose in a in a traditional system in a traditional system what used to happen is that what used to happen is that uh, I'll come to questions in five minutes of Premnath and uh, Sai, I'll give you the details. Okay, in a traditional way, what used to happen, you used to have the server and over and above the server, you used to install the operating system like Windows Server uh, 2010 or uh, 2012 and then on the operating system or, or Linux, for example, Linux servers, Ubuntu or, uh, you know, Fedora, Red Hat uh, Linux uh, uh, or any of these servers of different flavors and then over on top of the operating system you used to deploy your applications using something called uh, you know tom if it is a web application then then there would be web servers and uh, over on top of uh, web servers you need to deploy the applications now there are multiple applications uh, and then uh, uh, they are they are they are uh, sharing the operating system uh, uh, whatever operating like like a simple software installation you used to do it but what is the challenge that that people faced is that as as an as an as the time passed by now there used to be this uh, uh, you know hardware but once you deploy an application and reserve the uh, particular thing for a particular application there is a dependency on the operating system for example what if i want two operating systems to be running on my hardware stack that is not possible so uh, I, I have to buy a new hardware, that means a new rack server, and then set up my new application. I'm talking about a, in a traditional stack, okay? Don't, I'll come to virtualization and VMs in a while. Okay, then set up your applications on, 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 on the other operating systems. So this is very cumbersome, this is very costly. We need a way wherein I don't need to set up uh, different servers when there is a different operating system requirement is there. Okay, I want to optimize the way I am deploying applications. Now came something called a virtualization. In virtualization, there will be a software called hypervisor. And hypervisor, what does it do? Hypervisor uh, is very intelligent uh, software which knows how much amount of resources are there. And then when we tell that, we want an application based out of a, you know, uh, based on a, a particular OS. Let's say I want, a, I, I have a .NET application, which is based on a Windows operating system. I have a, you know, a Node.js application, which, which should run on a Linux operating system. And, and let's say like, uh, 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 iOS application which is working on which which needs to work on some uh, and uh, uh, some uh, iOS uh, based uh, thing. Now I have multiple operating systems, but the underlying uh, hardware is a single hardware. Now hypervisor, a intelligent system, what it will do, it will see like 
for 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 the first operating for the first app how much resources it is required let's say there is a requirement of uh, four cores and uh, eight gb ram and some storage now what hypervisor will do it will analyze the resources okay it has 64 cores so let's reserve four cores for this particular uh, uh, thing okay this particular resource now this particular set of app OS and the virtualized hardware that is whatever is required uh, uh, the logically allocating the memory and CPU and other things this whole thing works exactly as a physical system okay it's it works exactly as a physical system but only thing is it is virtual that's why it is called virtual machine a virtual machine is exactly identical to a physical machine except that the resources are virtual that means it is uh, they are shared across multiple systems and the and then they all work together to give you a single entity so multiple os now can share a physical hardware and provide different services. These are called virtual machine model. VMs now, VMware and uh, you know Oracle Virtual Box uh, uh, and, and many other uh, uh, companies came up. They became pretty popular. Virtualization became a uh, fantastic thing. If you were in the software industry, some somewhere like 2010, 12, then you will hear you will be hearing this VMware and virtual machines a lot. Okay, that used to be the boom then. Then what are the advantages we received? First thing, uh, we were able to optimize the way we, want, we we use the resources and consume the resources. That is utilization. And then availability also we increased. For example, we want a new VM to be scheduled, new app to be scheduled. Then I can quickly see at the uh, 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 you know hardware stack and understand like, okay, this particular server uh, can accommodate one more VM. So I can, I can schedule quickly. That means availability is there. Security wise also, each VM has its own way of isolating with each other. Uh, so, so this application has nothing to do with other application. But whereas in a traditional model, applications are scheduled and a single operating system, which is, which is slightly, you know, uh, uh, not a secure way of provi provisioning the application. So here in VM model, we have applications which can be isolated from each other uh, at, at a core operating system level. And, and, and uh, this gives uh, a better level of security than earlier system. So this is about OS and virtualization. So virtualization is the enabler for cloud computing. Why we call enabler? Because that helped in provisioning on-demand resources to the user. So till here, any doubts guys, let's take some, a quick one minute uh, break to address the questions. Okay, if there are anything. Uh, Sai Maruti, yes, I have uh, answered your question. Recordings will be available. Check with the uh, support team. Then Premnath is asking, I have GCP associated and Arctic exam vouchers will get expired by November. November, okay, today is September 18th. Okay, can I get certification dumps immediately after making the payment? Premnath, uh, just drop a mail to the support team and we will help you. Don't worry. Uh, we are there with you, Premnath. You just need to register for the course and uh, make the payment and connect with the support team. I will help you out. Uh, you just need to drop the uh, mail to the support team or call them uh, uh, and, and we will we'll, we will uh, uh, make sure the necessary arrangement is made. Okay. For, for those uh, uh, others, uh, uh, we, will, we will be posting the uh, uh, dumps and all uh, in the portal itself. So don't worry that it is exclusive deal to Prem Nathar Summer. If you also have any requirements as such, uh, you can you can ask me. I am here to support you and we are here to support you as large Lab Technologies. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to understand some other properties and characteristics of uh, cloud computing. So now there are there are so many things it's an ocean of things okay what are properties these are theoretical things so what i'm going to do now i am going to uh, introduce you to google cloud services now what you need to do as a homework uh, uh, once you register, you will get access to all these PPT slides. There are something around 70 to 80 slides here. All are theoretical. Each one gives you a, a, a uh, idea into what are the features of uh, cloud and all. I will touch upon the important aspects. You go through the remaining things. Okay. What I want you to know, it is a shared approach. <laughs> like uh, there is something called shared responsibility model, even in our classes also. So what my share is i will teach you the essential aspects i will give you homework you need to go through the homework for 
for your own uh, knowledge and understanding so for the first homework what you need to do i will upload this uh, port, uh, upload this uh, huge presentation into the portal once you register you will get access to the portal you go through the ppt by end of the day you will get the ppt so go through the ppt understand if you have any queries you will be asking me queries in the tomorrow session okay so let's try to uh, understand certain gcp services in a new sdlc model and then come back here after uh, after discussion to understand the theoretical things so let me grab some water quickly and if you have any questions always uh, put it in the chat and at the end of the session you can also raise your hands ask your queries on you know uh, live with me okay not an issue at all but in the middle i will entertain uh, uh, the questions through chat so you can keep uh, the questions in chat give me a minute let me grab some water Fantastic. Okay, everyone. So coming back, let's try to understand how does Google Cloud, we have seen like cloud model, right? So now there are several services which are offered by Google Cloud. From a studies uh, uh, thing, we have seen that there are several modules we are going to discuss and each module has certain core cloud services from Google and we will be covering them throughout the course, right? Now, for better understanding of how these services will help you in 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 becoming in a cloud engineer or as a as you, as a cloud engineer or a devops engineer or a or even a developer or a software architect on a day to day basis how does these services which we are going to learn throughout our course helps you let's try to understand that uh, in 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 a brief fashion and uh, try to okay try to explore these aspects now i have I have told you that uh, as a as a as a gesture of gratitude, I would be providing the DevOps tools required uh, uh, provided by GCP as a free of cost. Okay, we will be having a GCP DevOps crash course after the after this course. Uh, that access will be provided to you as a part of the core GCP course itself. So free of cost, you can also learn the DevOps tools. Now let's start with a traditional software development model, how does it happen in real world? For those who are freshers, this will be new to you. So slightly focus more. For those experienced guys, you also you already know what is happening. So in a real world, in an enterprise scenario, what will happen? There will be a ecosystem of different services which will be used to transfer or ship the code from your developers to outside world. What is the goal of uh, IT industry? You tell me, what, what is the goal of IT industry? You know, any anybody in, 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 in IT world, they want to achieve one thing. What is that? They want to deliver the services. Uh, they want to deliver the services in a first, uh, in a in a much faster, secure, and uh, in 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 a in a way better than their competitors. Or if it is a no profit, uh, to 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 provide better service through their software. That is the goal, right? So now whenever whenever that goal is there there are lot of uh, nuts and bolts that happen are lots of uh, moving moving parts that will take care of this process the goal of software industry is to develop a software and move it and ship it in a way that end user can use it okay that is the goal end user is there developer is there or the one who builds software you you make sure that the, the, the application that got developed is safely, securely, faster and quicker manner is developed efficiently to the end user in a way it is desirable and expected by the consumer. Okay, that is the, there are so many jargons out there, but don't worry about them. So now in order to achieve this, what are the different uh, steps involved? Let's try to understand the traditional uh, software development lifecycle model. Okay, what, what does it comprises? The first step involved is like the code okay where does the code who developed the code the code is developed by developers okay from your mission there would be individual developer there would be hundreds of developers split into different teams and developing multiple applications together now let's assume that there are few developers and they have developed some code in their local machines once they have developed in their own laptops or local machines there should be a centralized way to collaborate among the 
a, a team and they need to save the code in one particular location. That is called source code repository, a place where all the developers who develop the code will push the code to a common place so that so that there will be code reviews happening, there will be security scans happening and everything. So it's essentially a centralized way. For this purpose, in, in Google, we have a, a you know, a CICD tool called, uh, uh, you know, source code repository where like GitHub, like GitHub, we also have a CACD uh, uh, tool called uh, uh, this thing, uh, source code, uh, uh, source source repository, which is exactly like uh, Git repos. Basically, Git is a technology of uh, managing the source code. GitHub is a product. Okay, Git is a technology. GitHub is a software cloud product, which is of course acquired by Microsoft, and uh, it is now a Microsoft product. GitHub is a cloud-based one. Similar to GitHub, source repositories is a Google product to save the source code. Now, once the source code is available, there will be you know certain uh, so uh, uh, you know um, some vulnerabilities or any any uh, you know bugs are there that will be scanned using several tools. And uh, once the tools are done, we should have a platform which will enable automation of this purpose. Okay, for that purpose, we have something called, uh, uh, you know, cloud build and cloud deploy. What this will do, this will, you know, uh, help in setting up a platform like Jenkins. If you have uh, already been into the uh, DevOps, uh, uh, industry, uh, DevOps uh, 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 workflow, if you are aware of those things, you know that there will be a CACD platform uh, which will enable the automation of all the steps. So let's first understand the steps and then see the tools that will automate the steps. Now, once the code is built, right? Now, uh, code is built that will be saved into source repositories. Now you will have, uh, now the next challenge is to, now to uh, transfer this code reliability into reliably into the destination what is the what is the way to reliably transfer you need to have a setup setup uh, called uh, uh, you know uh, packaging the code now different software languages are the programming language that different way of packaging the code for example if you have a java java application what once you once you package uh, compile and package the code the end product is a uh, jar file or var file Similarly, if you have a .NET application, you will have a NuGet and you will be packaging them into .exe files. Similarly, if you use a Node.js application, you use a NPM node package manager and you will get the end goal or end package. These are called uh, uh, packaged applications or the outputs are called artifacts. Okay, Artifacts are the outputs from packaging of your code. These artifacts have to be saved somewhere, right? These artifacts which are the end uh, uh, end product after compiling the code and you know doing certain uh, uh, you know <clears throat> uh, code uh, tests and all uh, the output is artifacts and you, you will save the artifacts in a place called artifact registry there are third party artifact registries like uh, Nexus and other things, but Google also provides an artifact uh, 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 registry. Okay, registry uh, artifact. Google's artifact registry is a place where you can save the packaged uh, uh, code. Okay, now once you have the code ready, you should have a mechanism to uh, deploy the code into your end uh, end environment or the environment where you want to uh, uh, you know test and uh, uh, do some activities or it can be anything. Now, there are a few terminologies you need to understand. If you are a fresher, what does deployment mean? Deployment means installing or setting up the uh, uh, packaged application for the use of end user. Now, there is something called environment. The word environment means a set of infra configurations and everything to make sure that our application is run properly. This environment, when I say in, in future classes, it can be, you know, an, an, a, a, a VM or a set of VMs or a Kubernetes cluster or any other tool which has the capability to host the application. Understand? So environment means a set of features, configurations, infrastructure and everything together, which is, which is ready to host an application and make sure that the goal is delivered. Now, there are different, there will be usually like, uh, uh, you know, three to five environments and differ, differ between different, different uh, organizations. Essentially, the goal of this environment will be different from each other. First, there will be a dev environment where you, your uh, developers can test locally for their purpose. Once they build it, they want to test by themselves. There will be 
uh, QA environment where your quality analysts or quality engineers will do all the necessary, you know, selenium based tests and, uh, you know, the testing and all happens on the code. And whenever they find some bugs, that is their goal, right? They will inform the developer that please uh, do the bug fixes and please send the, again the code. So the process again, it will go uh, from here. Any, 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 uh, uh, any issue is there, they will raise the, you know, bug, uh, bugs, they will report it to, uh, sorry, they will report it to the developers and developers fix the bugs and the process will continue. The next step is once the QA gives a sign off, then the, the code will be moved into another environment called staging environment or pre-pod environment or UAT environment. There will be multiple uh, environments in, in this stage. Okay. Usually in, in, in larger enterprises, there will be like, you know, three, three pre-prod environments. Like one will be called stage UAT and uh, uh, then uh, then there will be a pre-prod environment also. Usually assume that there will be one environment where basic uh, uh, sanity and uh, user acceptance testings will be there. That is where uh, uh, the client will look at the code, uh, look at the application and will be uh, making sure that that is what uh, he or she expected. That is what the client has expected. That is called UAT or staging environment where just before going live, live or just before you introduce the application to the end user or, or, or provide the software product to the end user, you just do a uh, you know basic uh, test that everything is functioning properly or not, whether it is intended, uh, whether the customer intended features are available or not, and that will be done. In a, in a, in a pre-prod environment and final environment will be called the production environment. When you say production environment, you, most of you might have, uh, heard about, you know, production environments, you might be supporting production environment and many uh, people who are seniors here might have set up and work production environments like me. So production environments are very secure environments, which are which are serving the live traffic. Live traffic means the end users will be connecting. For example, if you have Gmail, how are you accessing Gmail? You go to the uh, 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 web browser and type Gmail, right? That, that uh, uh, you know, the content is provided by the servers from Google, right? So that is like your application hosted somewhere and the actual user is trying to connect. For example, yours is a e-commerce product. Let's say you are selling pens, okay? Or, or, or some sports products, okay? Uh, like Amazon. Now the production environment or live environment is like that where your actual sales are happening, where people will log in, look at the inventory, see, compare the products and uh, place orders for the products. So this is what where actual revenue is generated for your client. So this is money guys, this is money. So you need to be ultra careful when dealing with live and production environment. So your application is deployed in all the stages in, in, in a way that it is automated and it is always, you know, be accessible to the to the respective teams like QA team, UAT team, and then uh, of course uh, the SRE and DevOps team. So now in all these things, where does different different Google Cloud uh, services will help you? Let's try to understand. Okay, now the first and foremost thing, a, any cloud service or anything will need access, right? So access, how does how does uh, my Google services or cloud services can be accessed. There is a mechanism called identity and access management, which helps in, in the first layer of access and authorization. Now developers, when they try to push code into our tool called source, uh, uh, source repository, sorry, uh, uh, source repositories or source code repository, then they need to have certain level of access, right? Identity and access management deals with different users, user groups, what level of permission they should have and what level of authorization they should have to different resources. This is the first uh, thing which we are going to learn that is identity and access management. As a part of it, I said that we will be dealing with, you know, roles, roles and responsibilities and then how to create different service accounts and uh, what are different uh, workload identity federation models and then other things, okay? So that is about module two, that is we are going to start with identity access management. Once identity and access management is done, then you need to transfer and move the code from one place to another place and you need to make sure that everything is properly working. For that purpose, networking is the primary requirement. So we will go ahead and we will learn about networking fundamentals and networking resources by our 
our uh, 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 this thing, uh, our uh, GCP. What are the different networking services? Like what are VPCs? What are subnets? For those freshers out there, don't worry. I will be providing the necessary basic understanding of networking so that you can understand different advanced technologies like NAT, firewall, firewall rules, energy rules, VPC peering, VPC, how to share in enterprise scenarios. So for those who are seniors out there, uh, uh, I will be discussing the advanced concept like how to share a VPC in real world, how when to share a VPC, how the network peering will work and different aspects too. Okay. Once we have the network foundations ready with us, the next step is how to create different virtual machines for our environments, dev environments, QA environments. I said, right? For this purpose, how does different uh, 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 VMs are created. For that purpose, we will be we will be talking about compute services, that is VMs. We will see virtualization, how compute engines can be created, what are different types of machine, mission types, what are VM instances, uh, how to create a VM instance for our requirement, how to choose a VM instances, how to manage them, backup, uh, take backups, take images, snapshots, how to manage different components like persistent disk, local SSDs, and other things. Okay, that is about VMs and uh, VM management. Now the next step is uh, in the in the uh, uh, next step is how to how to make sure that we have the application in our uh, uh, in our environments uh, which is already let's say it is already serving traffic or there are multiple VMs how to balance the load for example if there are multiple users accessing my single application there should be a way to manage and balance the load for that purpose we will deal something called load balancing and auto scaling services where the core core uh, offering of our uh, cloud called auto scaling and load balancing will be discussed auto scaling means you increase the number of resources or infrastructure automatically without manual intervention and load balancing means you balance the traffic across multiple uh, machines for example within the uh, prod you have multiple vms let's say there are so many users connecting to your production servers now how do you balance the traffic how do you route the traffic so that there will be no bottleneck so nobody experiences any lags or downtime how to make sure that your applications are properly you know uh, scaled and properly uh, deployed so that we will deal with load balancing and auto scaling then we will understand how uh, uh, we will also see storage services like uh, how to save our applications how to if if an application needs a database we have databases different kinds of databases how to work with a uh, 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 database like cloud sql when to choose what kind of database we will see like a uh, PaaS services, SaaS database services. We will see like different different storage services like uh, you know to save static data like cloud storage, which is called object storage. How VMs can save the uh, how VMs are supported by operating systems using block storage. We will see. We will also see databases and whatnot. There will be something called object lifecycle management, versioning, so much and so more. Okay, we will understand how the entire data paradigm is managed. Whatever the data is there, whatever the storage mechanism is there, how do we use it? Whether it is, if it, whether the storage is for artifacts, whether the storage is for saving the source code, are the, uh, are the storage is for supporting the operating system or finally the storage is for managing any database. So for any purpose, how do we do the storage? We will see on the storage services module. Then we will understand there is new technology called containerization and orchestration. Now in a, in a agile methodology, we talk more about microservices based architecture. So in a, in a today's world, everybody is, uh, every application is a, 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 a group of smaller smaller sub applications called microservices and once microservices are uh, there we need to uh, uh, find a efficient and a suitable way of deploying those microservices called containerization orchestration we will discuss about how to containerize an application using docker and deploy those docker containers in in a in a in a automated uh, 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 model where we don't need a human inter much human intervention in the life managing the life cycle of those uh, Docker containers using a tool called Kubernetes. We will understand the basics of Docker and Kubernetes, and we will try to understand concepts such as what are Docker uh, images, what are Docker containers, how to pull them, push them into artifact registry, then deploy them into Kubernetes. What are concepts of Kubernetes like clusters, node, node pools, pods, and many other things. We will discuss at length about a Google product called, flagship product called Google Kubernetes engine. We will deploy Kubernetes engine and we'll see how these containerized applications can be deployed and properly managed. Then we will proceed to something called uh, 
logging and monitoring, which is very, very important because once our application is deployed, we need to know whenever an application is going down or if there is an application, if there is a faulty infrastructure or if the application is not performing. So there will be hundreds of uh, issues, right? How do we know? There should be a way of analyzing our application properly and also monitoring our environment and infrastructure properly. For, for uh, monitoring purpose, we'll have metrics and for observing and uh, for troubleshooting purpose, we will have something called logs. So logging and monitoring, we will understand using Google services called uh, Stackdriver. Uh, currently, currently uh, uh, we have something called Google uh, Suit. Uh, it, is, it has renamed, okay? Uh, we will understand cloud monitoring and logging. But we'll also understand for freshers, for the sake of freshers out there are who, who have, uh, 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 you know, uh, new to logging and monitoring, we'll be understanding the basics of fundamentals of logging and monitoring. And then we'll proceed to how to use Google's cloud uh, 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 logging and monitoring suit to understand uh, how to track uh, uh, the infrastructure, how to understand the metrics. Uh, we will also see the query language. We will not go at length because uh, it itself is a big course altogether. But anyways, uh, if you know SQL or anything, it will be easy for you to understand the queries. Even if you don't know SQL, there is an automated way of generating the queries. So you don't need to actually learn anything uh, new. Uh, so you will understand the monitoring and logging. And then we will try to understand how to integrate third-party tools like Promethean Prometheus and Grafana with our logging and monitoring. We will try to understand that portion as well. Strictly, Prometheus and Grafana is not a part of GCP, but uh, 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 in industry, you might be expected to uh, deal with sometimes with the open source software. So, uh, so I am going to provide you that also even Prometheus and Grafana as a part of, you know, but, but it will be very introductory thing, which will cater to the needs of GCP alone. Don't expect me to give the whole Prometheus and Grafana like 10, 15 day course, okay? Uh, then we will understand uh, uh, how to deal with some, several serverless services. For example, you are developing a service for dev environment. You will not have the uh, budget to uh, create a GKE cluster or managing the entire complexity of the GKE cluster. You are a developer, let's say, or you are, you are a DevOps engineer with a tight shoot string budget. Then how do you do that? You need to deploy the code and run it quickly, test it quickly, and then Again, you don't need to pay for the infrastructure post testing. Then for that purpose, we have several software as SaaS tools uh, like App Engine and we have Cloud Functions, Cloud Run, many other things, which will enable for quicker and faster and cheaper testing. So for that purpose, we'll see serverless technologies and then we will We'll go to uh, uh, most important and uh, flagship uh, uh, product of uh, Google that is data, big data and machine learning services. We will go at length about big data and machine learning services. Uh, we will provide, I will provide a, a basic understanding and basic introduction to ML and AIML and big data service, big data processes and terminologies. And then we will try to understand BigQuery. We will try to build data for pipelines. And in A, we will understand about Vertex A, and we will try to build some artificial uh, uh, intelligence and ML models, and we will try to build a chatbot uh, uh, within a session. You will you will be able to after this particular module, you will be able to uh, you know understand you know different terminologies and build uh, your infra and build uh, solutions for hosting the big data services like uh, uh, you you have managed Hadoop and alternative is uh, BigQuery. You have uh, you can build pipelines. Uh, for, for processing uh, uh, petabytes of data and also you can build artificial intelligence based uh, chatbots also okay so then we will come to miscellaneous topics whichever is uh, supporting uh, uh, our services uh, like uh, you know uh, there is uh, 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 you know uh, certain services which will help you in uh, 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 API management like APG and other things which strictly doesn't fall under DevOps uh, but but out there there will be developers also right among you so so API management is a very important thing so I will be covering some important uh, miscellaneous topics and then we will understand what are different GCP certifications how to grow in your career using certification what different certification paths and we will be providing different learning resources different uh, uh, certification dumps you will go through the dumps after why I'm providing you dumps at the end of the course because you need to understand the knowledge first, then only you you will appreciate how to understand the dump each question and address the intent behind the question. Okay, there is no point in providing dumps in the earlier stage. That's why I'm not providing. But if there are someone who is 
has strict uh, uh, deadlines like someone Prashant or someone put in the chat. Right? Uh, so sorry if I spell your name incorrectly, but uh, if there is any special requirement, you can directly contact us. Uh, we will provide you that resources. Okay, whatever. And for those out there who feel that the charge uh, which we are uh, we, we the the fee we are charging for our course, if you were feel that like uh, this is uh, costly, but look at the benefits we are providing. Uh, we are providing you a career builder series, uh, uh, which will be starting uh, in in October November in the weekends. We will be providing you uh, how to grow in your career, how to set up, what are the soft skills required. These are this is this is more about you know soft skills than your technical skills because many of the freshers and many of the even seniors uh, are, are 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 losing wonderful opportunities because of some silly mistakes or some some issues uh, as a as a as a as a as a uh, 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 member of many interview panels, which I have understood my experience, I will I will I will gather all this experience and share with you what to help you in your grow in your career. Then we will also I will also be taking a course on GCP DevOps lecture series, which is a crash course basically. But for others, it will be charged. For you, it will be free of cost. I will uh, uh, you need to uh, you will be informed about the course uh, whenever it starts. Uh, mostly in the next month after our course. After GCP thing, it will be starting and you will have the access to the videos, recorded videos for lifetime. So you can, even if you don't want to attend the lives, even you can also listen to the recorded lectures later on. Okay. Then I will be after the uh, course, at the end of the course, I will be providing to, providing you an end to end project, which will be exactly like real world project where you will be using most of the GCP services, which we have learned networking storage, VM, computation, uh, big data, AML, all most of the services, we will put it and we'll build a wonderful end-to-end -end project, which will be like a real world scenario where you alone will uh, try to for, uh, portray that to the examiner, uh, sorry, interviewer saying that like you have the capability and understanding to build such a environment and such a end-to-end uh, uh, -end, uh, 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 you know, software tool chain uh, for, for your uh, client. So that will help you in boosting your chances of getting a well-placed uh, job okay then i will uh, of course put, uh, provide you certification number. and most important what i have not put here which is invaluable is i'm going to provide you my personal id at the end of the course you can connect with me at uh, you can mail me you can send me your career with uh, career doubts or uh, doubts regarding your technical or anything i'll be there of course i cannot immediately respond to you within minutes but at least uh, uh, in one two days, I will be you know uh, addressing your queries so that you can you can always be you know uh, you know you will have a, uh, a virtual mentor at your uh, needs. Okay, so that is priceless. That that is priceless. So I don't even even keep here. So okay, so this is about our session, guys. So if you have any queries, please let me know. The floor is open for questions. Okay, Premnath, I have answered your question. Uh, then. Bamsi, hey, hi, Bamsi, how are you? Which DevOps tool can you please mention here in the chat? Bamsi, these DevOps tools which we'll be put, uh, covering will be strictly part of GCP services. And these are part of uh, GCP services like Cloud Build, Container Registry, Source Repository, and Cloud Deploy. These are the alternatives for Jenkins and uh, 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 you know Azure DevOps, similar to Azure DevOps where different services are there. We have CI CD services. These services will be part of the CI, uh, Google DevOps course and that will be not part of the Google course. It will be taken up separate as a separate course. So don't, please don't get mistaken that I'm going to cover these services as a part of Google course. This will be a separate course, which is chargeable for 15 days. I'm going to teach them. So please don't, uh, ask me to cover in this course okay that's a separate course but i will be given giving you free of cost access to you that okay hope you want abdul uh, where this virtual machines available virtual machines are available in the cloud uh, abdul so whenever you go to the google console for example here if you go to the search bar you search for compute engine you will go to compute engine you will see how to create compute engines and uh, what are different types of vms available and create the virtual M machines if your question is where are these virtual machines located there is no such thing as virtual machine there will be huge servers in data centers with use of virtualization or type 1 hypervisors we will discuss what are type 1 hypervisors type 2 hypervisors going forward using type 1 hypervisors like vmware esxi and other things gcp or google will share the resources and create virtual machines for us okay so in GCP, all services are uh, services 
inside virtualization yes correct abdul you are absolutely right then vinita hussain is asking sir do databricks are there in gcp no databricks is a azure concept right alternative to databricks we have something a data uh, uh, services which we will discuss at length we have an alternative sir databricks is actually azure service we have alternative service to databricks and we will discuss them okay uh, which projects we are covered in this course not which projects here we are going to cover one end to end project which will cover different services okay like for example how to pull how to deploy our code how to take the code how to containerize it how to deploy it into gke how to track it how to log how to do logging and monitoring how to uh, if if the if the application is big data and am a and ml application how to host it in bigquery how to do use bigquery and if it is a uh, chatbot based application how to use ai tools like vertex ai so like that we will we will we will use most of our services uh, networking and other thing, whatever we learned in the course to build our project. Like in a real world project, what do you see, Mamsi? You will see that there will be networking team, there will be DB team, there will be DevOps team, there will be uh, monitoring team. You will become all those teams. You will become all those teams and build all those things. You will get the, uh, you know, full documentation for the project and the source code. You can put it in your GitHub repo and uh, showcase to your prospective employers. Okay. So any more doubts, guys, please put it in that. Um, um, please put it in the chat if you have any questions. Uh, so you will be learning data related platforms and everything. So that's all from my side, guys. Uh, if you have any queries, let me know. I will be stopping the recording now. Okay. Thank you so much, guys.